What's up fam? My name is B Walk and welcome back to Cop Your Coin where I show you how to cop your coin in the fastest growing market in world history. Have you ever wondered why the same poker players end up at the last table of the main event? It's not luck. It's skill and it's human psychology. Let me show you how to apply those methods within the cryptocurrency market utilizing candlestick charts. This is part one of a three part series. Today, we're gonna focus on candlesticks and trends. And as always fam, I'm gonna ask you to do three things. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and hit that alert button so that you know when fresh content is coming out from Copy Your Coin. Let's build. Okay, let's get started. Right over here, we're on tradingview.com. And again, all the web pages and this trading view, everything, the links that I'm using, will be down in the description. So feel free to take a look at that at your leisure. Uh, so don't worry about having to try to write that down now. But again, I'm looking at tradingview.com. That's the trading page that I use to trade cryptocurrencies. And this particular pair is the Bitcoin versus the US dollar. So it gives you what the Bitcoin is worth in US dollars. Okay, currently it's at 6201. You can see this uh, right there in this corner, 6208, obviously it's bouncing. These are candlesticks. Okay, so we have green candlesticks, we have red candlesticks. The green ones are bullish, the red ones are bearish. Why is that? Okay, so if you zoom in on these candlesticks, you can get an idea of kind of why we call them candlesticks. Uh, for example, this green one right here looks like it has a wick at the top. It also looks like it has a wick at the bottom, okay? So let me go to a, a site that kind of helps me break that down for you. Uh, here, candlesticks were basically created by the Japanese back in the 17th century. That's what this site actually t refers to. And it was during the rice market. Uh, we actually started using them in around the 1900s, uh, initiated by Charles Dow and been using them ever since. Uh, I've seen them in technical analysis and a lot of uh, different financial instruments. They've been been around since I've been trading. <laughs> anyway, it's a great way to analyze the market because it gives you a lot of information at once. Okay, now it doesn't give you everything. It's not the silver bullet. Okay, but it does give you insight into where the market might be going. It gives you an edge, and that's all you need to be successful as an investor in the cryptocurrency market. Okay, so we're going to talk about where this comes from. I, this actually according to Steve Neeson, which is interesting because I got that book here called Japanese Candlestick Charting Techniques. I'm sure you can find this book for cheap. And really, right now, you don't even have to do that. You can come on these sites right here that I'm pointing out to you. So <laughs> you're good to go. However, what I wanted to point out specifically was what is actually going on with these candlesticks? What are we talking about? So on the right hand side of this legend right here, you have open, close, high, and low. So the candlestick says where the, the on the bullish side, it says where it opened at, at the beginning of the price. Let's say this is a daily candlestick. Okay, so the, the candlestick is formed over the course of a day. So it opened here for the day, went a little lower, went a little higher, but ended up closing a little bit lower from the high, but ultimately opened higher than it open so you have a white or green real body right here and you have the wicks or upper and lower shadow you can see there that's basically saying where the price action has been for that time period in this case a day down below is the same thing but on the bullish on the bear side excuse me so you have it opening here going a little higher coming back and going a little lower then closing ultimately here so that it was bearish for the day so the real body was black or in our case red on the charts again upper shadow lower shadow showing you where the price action had been for the day so this gives you a insight as far as how the price is acted during that time period now you can have daily candlesticks you can have weekly candlesticks you can have hourly you can have minute candlesticks now we're not going to get into that because i typically just use daily and hourly but it gives you an idea of kind of how it's moving but only within regards to a trend. And why do I say that? Because a candlestick in and of itself doesn't mean a whole lot of anything. 
It only means a lot when you see what the trend is, when it's next to other candles and you can see where the market is actually going. Uh, so this is about a five minute read. Please take your time to read it. Again, it's stockcharts.com. Again, I will put the link down there. Uh, but it has some examples of different candlesticks patterns that you might see on the charts when you're looking at them and what to expect. What I, what I really wanted to go to is here in the candlestick, this is an investopedia.com. And this is another great site great resource because it has a lot of information on basically anything you want to know basically when it has to do with analyzing the financial markets again reiterates what i just talked about your bearish candlestick opening going higher going lower then closing lower dark red in this case bullish opening going higher or going lower closing here close so it closes higher than it opens so it's green okay so that's a bullish candlestick but what I wanted to specifically talk about again was the trend. Now, like I said, in a vacuum, a candlestick doesn't mean a lot. But in the 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 uh, in the trend, you can get an idea of what to expect next. So in this particular case, we have a hammer and an inverted hammer. A hammer is basically a candlestick that has a small real body, and it doesn't really matter the color, but it has a long wick at the bottom. That's a hammer. Inverted hammer is exactly the same opposite. Okay. So here you have candlesticks. These are bearish candlesticks going down, as you can see, the trend from left to right. So let's just say that for the sake of argument, these are daily sticks. So every every day, it's just going down, down. This day, it was a bullish day, but it still is in a downtrend, as you can see. Then we get here, and it seems that the bears have run out of steam. Why do I say that? Because they basically are selling, 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 and get to here, and then all of a sudden, the pressure reverses and the bulls step in and they start buying, buying, buying. There's always buyers and sellers in every market and every moment in time. The, this, what this is measuring is the vigorousness or the energy of, you know, who's the overwhelming favorite, who's winning, the who's turning the tide. In this particular case, you can see the bulls are turning the tide here. And so as I was looking at this, if I was looking at this in a chart, I would suspect that it might start to move higher. And sure enough, the next day it does, the day after that it does. Similar with the inverted hammer, same thing. You have a train that's going down, down, down. One, one candle goes up, but it's still going down. Get to a point here where, again, the bears, they, they push it as far as they can. They get to this little, like almost like a floor. Then the bulls say, well, we're going to try to reverse this. They push it higher, but then they don't, they're not able to get it to higher, and it closes back down. However, that was a signal that it might be a possible turn of the tide. And again, sure enough, it is. You see the next candle and the next candle. So it's not an automatic. It doesn't mean that it automatically will, but it does mean that it suspect that you can start to look for a, a possible inflection within the market. Another uh, pattern that you will see sometimes is the bullish engulfing. We have also have a bearish engulfing. But in this case, a bullish engulfing, which basically means the period before was a, was a bearish candle. Okay, so again, opened here went higher, closed, we went lower here and then closed here. Then the next day the price gapped down, okay? Opened up here, opened up here, went higher and then it'll close in here. But as you can see, it is the range that the price traveled is much further than this range. So right now it tells you that the energy is definitely on the bullish side. Does that mean that this chart's going to go off to the moon? Who knows. But it gives you an edge so that you can be getting ready for your position. As you look at these, they'll give you other, other uh, charting patterns, things that you'll see, and they'll pick them out. And I'm going to walk you through them as well. I want to go real quick, though, before we get to that and talk about what candlesticks don't tell you, okay? Now, somebody, I'm sure somebody might even pick this up as I was explaining it. In a period of a day, it, it, this is the obvious examples which you think is happening. It opens here. Like we said, it goes a little lower, then goes up here, gets a higher, then closes here for the day. So as I say, that happened in a period of 24 hours. So that's how you get this picture. But it could also have been this. It could also have opened here, gone up straight up right away, then falling back, you know, midday, keep on falling, then fight back up and close here. These both show the same picture. That's why it's important not to be caught up in the entry, the entry period of whatever candles you're watching. You want to make sure the candle forms fully. So if you're on a daily chart, you want the candle to form a full day, daily candle 
or if you're on an hourly chart, you wait for the candle to full form hourly chart before you make a decision because you don't know what's happening during, in that intra period. So you want to make sure that we make it on a complete picture. And so candlesticks don't tell you everything, right? That's why it comes into uh, in cooperation and co with a collaboration with the other signals that we're going to talk about, like trends, like volume, like support, like resistance. We'll get into those things. OK, so let's go back to the market and take a look right here. We'll zoom out a little bit. And again, this is Bitcoin. OK, so as you can see, it is sorry about that. As you can see, it is fairly volatile <laughs> in the last. This, this goes from May to August right now. So in the last three, four months, it's gone up and down with a high at almost almost 10,000. And with a low at shoot, it's almost sixty one hundred dollars. OK, and then we're currently at about sixty two twenty eight. So it's gone down, it's gone up. But what I want what I want to zoom in on is, is you can see again, kind of like we were talking about the, the patterns. Here's one that we kind of see here. Let me zoom in real quick. Remember, I talked about hammers. Here's a hammer pattern. As you see, the, the chart's going down, 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 and then, well, what do we get? We get here a small body with a low wick. Now, like I said, it's, it gives you an idea that the tide might be turning. It did, I didn't say it's going to turn immediately. The example they gave you was three white candles right, right back to back, or three green candles. As you can see, that's not the case. It, but it, it definitely had found what we call a support or a floor and started to move up in the other direction. If you'd have bought here and sold here, you'd be, in, you'd be, you'd be pretty happy. <laughs> so it gives you, again, an inclination, gives you like almost some insight a probability hey it might be making a turn here this might be an inflection point so get ready to make my move uh as i want to look at the other chart so i want again this is bitcoin you take a look now i'm gonna just switch over here to ethereum same type of chart daily chart but it's a, a little bit different picture as you can see now ethereum has it has some of the some of the uh movement that bitcoin has had so I'll give you I'll go back to Bitcoin real quick so you can see. Right. But as you can also see, Ethereum is, is a much <laughs> it, look, it hasn't had the ramp up, the, the last tail ramp up that Bitcoin had. And Ethereum, I think, is it's actually setting up to go into a little trendless point and it might be moving higher. And we'll see later. But this is an example here looking at the, the daily chart, Ethereum against the uh, Ethereum against the US dollar. And again, you can see. As we look at this, there's various patterns. These candles in and of themselves don't mean a lot. But when you look at them together, then you get some insight. Then you start to see where the market might be going. OK, uh, this is an example right here. This is a we call it kind of like a piercing line. What that means is not a, a bearish engulfing. But as you see, the first that that first candle, we had a high here at seven or eight thirty. And it closed ultimately at uh, 8:15. Opened at 8:15, but fell down, right? And almost, almost engulfed this. So that's a signal you're seeing right here. As you see, it ran up and got to this point. And there's some other things that told me that this might be a turn. So I was prepared for this in my particular case. However, you, there's no guarantee. Like I said, it could have bumped up here for a little bit and, and kept going higher. But it just gives you a, a kind of an idea. This might be a turn. Get ready. Hey, I'm at, I'm out here. I'm, I'm taking profits at this point. So these are the type of things that we want to talk about when you when you're preparing to trade in the, in the cryptocurrency market. It's gonna what's gonna make you prepared. Now in the next video, I'm going to speak about volume, support and resistance, and putting it all together so that you understand which way to read and how the trends are going and and how to interact. That will be in part two of this uh, of this cryptocurrency piece uh, reading the charts and the question of the day between these two charts this is ethereum and this is bitcoin which one do you think looks the most bearish or most bullish now i've moved it around you know i i, I let's let's let me give you let me give you a good a good look so this is one and this is the other which one looks bearish and which one looks bullish?
Or do they both look bearish? You tell me. Anyway, that's all for now, and I will catch you next time on Cop Your Coin.